before we go to the first um, uh, lecture of today, I just want to give a brief introduction about Dr. Carlos Jankiewicz. Uh, I, uh, I uh, say it in two languages. First, I uh, give, first of all, I give a brief introduction in Farsi and then in English. So, Hanran Aval Embuzumun Agaye Dr. Carlos Jankiewicz, Rais Kargure Keshawarzi and Manzar Federation Benumelali Memoran Manzar, Ifla Hassan Kedarbari, Ertebot Keshawarzi and Manzar, so Hanrani Mikona. Ishan Hamchini Mojiramel Shekate. بین المللی تروپیکا هستن این شرکت در زمینه منظر طراحی شهری طراحی محیط زیست مرمت اکولوژیکی و گردشگری خدمات مشاوره برنامه‌ریزی و طراحی و اجرا را ارائه میده علاقه حرفه‌ای دکتر جانکویچ به تنوع زیستی احیای اکولوژیکی و منظرهای فرهنگی باعث شده ایشان به عنوان عضوی از کمیته بین المللی منظر فرهنگی ایکاموس و عضو فدراسیون بین المللی معماران منظر ایفلا در طرح‌های بین المللی زیادی مشارکت داشته باشند در سال 2010 تا 2014 ایشون ریاست منطقه ایف منطقه آمریکای ایفلا رو نیز بر عهده داشتن و در سال گذشته به عنوان اولین رئیس کارگروه تازه تأسیس کشاورزی و منظر این فدراسیون بین المللی انتخاب شدند در وبینار امروز دکتر کارلوس جانکیویچ درباره رابطه کشاورزی و معماری منظر سخنرانی می‌کنند بعد از معرفیشون به زبان انگلیسی ازشون خواهش میکنم که سخنرانی خودشون رو ارائه بدن. Our first speaker, Dr. Carlos Jankiewicz, is the chair of the International Federation of Landscape Architects, IFLA, Working Group on Agricultural Landscape. Dr. Carlos Jankiewicz is an architect specializing in landscaping, urban design, and environmental planning. He is the CEO of Tropica International Company, which is devoted to consulting, planning, design, and construction of landscape, environmental and urban design projects with emphasis on ecological uh, regeneration, uh, productive cultural landscapes, and tourism. He has worked on development of public and private works at several scales from macro to domestic level. Particularly interested in biodiversity, ecological regeneration, and cultural landscape, he has uh, led important initiatives both as a member of the International Scientific Committee of Alcamos IFLA and representing IFLA, which is the International Federation of Landscape Architects, of which he was president of America's region between 2010 and 2014. He is currently the commissioner of Central American and Caribbean, a position he shares acting as the first chair of recently appointed IFLA Working Group on Agriculture and Landscape. Today, Dr. Carlos uh, uh, Jankiewicz, chair of the International Federation of Land Landscape Architects Working Group on Agriculture and Landscapes, uh, agricultural landscape it speaks about agriculture and landscape architecture. Dr. Carlos Jankiewicz, please. Thank you. Okay, well, um, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. And uh, thank you, Armin, for inviting me to this uh, very interesting webinar, seminar uh, you are having at Tehran. Um, as he was saying, today we are going to speak about agriculture and landscape, about how towards the pursuit of territorial justice and food security. In this presentation, we are going to tackle with three issues. Landscape, COVID-19 landscape and dust, and challenges and opportunities. Culture, an activity in which about 50% of the world's population depends for its livelihood, is an important economic force. It is also a way of life, a factor of cultural identity, and an ancestral pact with nature. Within the non-monetary values of agriculture are the landscape, the habitat, and its liaison, territorial planning, as well as its capacity to raise awareness about the regional communities and our idiosyncrasy. But without a doubt, the most significant contribution of agriculture is that for more than 820 million of undernourished people in the world, most of them in rural areas, it is a means to face hunger. Climate change affect infrastructure, public health, agriculture, the loss of human lives, and other forms of production, further threatening 
the already fragile food security of human society. But what kind of agriculture are we talking about and where it's being performed? What kind of agriculture and for whom? But mainly, what kind of agriculture, which landscape? Culture and landscape current challenges are climate change, social and environmental resilience, and food security and sovereignty. We aim to spread the concept of productive landscapes as the current social construction of landscapes, a landscape whose management, far from exhausting resources, contributes to its production. Food security is the situation in which all people at all times a physical and economic access to get enough nutrition, safe food, to meet their nutritional needs and develop a healthy life. Sensitive and aware of this situation, during the International Conference held in Oslo in September 2019, the IFLA World Working Group on Agriculture and Landscape was appointed. IFLA at world level presently encompasses five regions worldwide, hosting 76 national and two multinational associations. The IFLA World Working Group was set up in order to create a globally organized team of specialists capable to fulfill the following targets. establish, plan, and coordinate, and oversee IFLA's overall frameworks in all matters dealing with strategic actions within strategic plans, awake awareness, understanding, and stimulate commitment regarding the relationship between agriculture and productive land landscape. IFLA World Working Group on Agriculture and Landscape has as main targets to make an inventory of agricultural heritage systems in each region and nation in response to the safeguarding of agricultural biodiversity and wildlife and the dissemination of indigenous knowledge, sources, and ancestral culture, store and deepen mutual collaboration opportunities between agriculture, urban agriculture, productive landscapes, public space, and cultural natural heritage, promote actions based on transformation, innovation, and resilience regarding territorial justice, food security, and food sovereignty, identify and promote efficient levels of production consumption according with the communities and their environment. Pursue of the attainment of these targets, IFLA Working Group, World Working Group, signed an agreement with IICA, the American Institute for Asian, on Agriculture, which is the largest agricultural agency of the organizations of the American states, and also recently started a dialogue with FAO, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, GIAS program. Through both ICA and FAO joint actions, we seek to integrate initiatives and generate international, regional, and local cooperation worldwide. COVID-19 hit the world by March 2020. The following is a portrait of how it found us and the critical situation that were deepened and ag aggravated since then. Numbers of hungry people in the world 
in 2018, 821.6 million, or one in nine people. In Asia, 513.9 million. In Africa, 256.1 million. In Latin America and the Caribbean, 42.5 million. Number of moderately or severely food insecure, 2 billion, 26.4% of the percent of the population. People with low health weight, 20.5 million, 1 in 7. Children and their five affected by stunting, low height for their age, is 148. 0.9 million, 21.9% of the world population. Children under five affected by wasting low weight for height, 49.5 million, 7.3%. Children under five who are overweight, high weight for their height is 40 million. School age children and adolescents who are overweight is 33, 8 million adults who are obese, 60, 672 million, amounting for 13% or one in eight adults. This is figures from the uh, Health World Organization stating the imbalance between them who are suffering for lack of food security or not having sufficient nutritional healthy food to eat, and those who are overweight and deal with other health problems for that. In Latin America and the Caribbean, 40 million people every night go to sleep without having met their minimum food needs. 60% of the inhabitants are undernourished, a figure that in 2019 was increasing for the third consecutive year really on family farming representing 60% of the agricultural effort along the continent. Small farmers, including women and youth, suffer from lang lack of access to infrastructure, education, and technology. More than 60% of family farmers are at poor poverty level. Additionally, 8.4 of women experience gaps in their food security in contrast with 6.9 for men. So this is how the the, the COVID-19 pandemic met us. We were there then. In a context where the population at world level was fastly, it was in an accelerated manner, manner was growing mainly in, in metropolitan and urban areas. And at the same time, the people that were under marriage uh, amounted for significant uh, high percentages, although there is, as you can see in the chart, a declining tendency. Uh, still, the world is the world uh, average average is within the 15 to 10 percent ratio, and the regions of the world in the most uh, unbalanced or difficult situation are sub Savanna in Africa, in Southern Asia, then Eastern Asia, Latin America, and South America. We see these figures now in the map where the percentage of nourishment goes from uh, yellow when it's uh, around in the range of 5 to 10 percent of the population of that area. And it goes to the red as this uh, undernourishment in increases. The gray areas are great uh, areas in which Fao, who is the author of the map, didn't have information at the moment. Prevalence of malnutrition in Latin America and the Caribbean. As America has a higher prevalence of malnutrition affecting up to 10.3 of the population. Malnutrition Prevalence varies widely through Latin America and the Caribbean. Brazil and Uruguay were the only countries with prevalence of malnutrition lower than 2.5 between 2014 and 2016. 
prevalence of chronic malnutrition, acute, and mortality in minor children under five is uh, nevertheless in Latin America and the, and the Caribbean decreasing over time. Still, these are significant figures. We'll have a look at the same we were comment commenting on in these charts about prevalence of malnutrition. And also the mortality rate. Poverty in Latin America and the Caribbean operates as a mechanism of reproduction of gaps between urban and rural and affects access to services, uh, basic services, health, education, and infrastructure, um, infrastructure among, among others. Here we see, we, we have a look at the condition of extreme poverty around the world, where again the color code code goes from light green to darker green for the areas that are between the lowest uh, percentages and it goes more serious uh, to alarming and extreme uh, poverty in those that go from yellow uh, to orange to dark green. Now we see the same uh, information. We, we can see again is South Asia at the top of the extreme poverty. Um, and um, South Africa at the bottom. On the other side, we can see that you know, on the red bottom, the uh, poverty amount of the population of the world, and then it goes through the green up to the top when this uh, ratio uh, diminishes. Here we go again, another map to have a look at how extreme poverty is distributed uh, around the world. Again, that green or green goes for the, the places where the percentage of extreme poverty uh, is less to non-existent. And then it moves to, to pink and red and darker red as the uh, situation uh, gets serious. Here we can have a look at the same thing about the extreme poverty worldwide by the year 2015. Again, our indicators. And then we got up to the point where we this is related to the what is called the Global Hunger Index. And we see how South Asia is at the highest uh, level. And um, Africa, south of Sahara, is one that follows. And then Near East and North Africa, East and South Asia, and finally Latin America. The colors go from black under five mortality rate, gray, wasting in children, white, stunting in children, and green, proportion of undernourished. Again, the, the hunger map. Sorry. United Nations Development Goals were signed um, by 2015, dealing with all the problems of um, climate change and global warming, and through a, um, say, a path that led all the world organization from 1972 in Stockholm to Paris in 2016. In 2015, the 17 United Nations Development Goals um, for sustainable, sustainable Development were signed. And then the second of these um, goals was zero hunger. However, 
we are already in, 19, in 2020, and we got only 10 years to try to accomplish this zero hunger uh, goal, to, re to reach the United Nations hunger goal zero in 2030, globally, 265 million US dollars per year would be needed during the period 2016 to 2013 to 2030, which broken down into US dollars per year, it would be seven, seven, six, 67 million for social protection US dollar and 180 billion for pro poor investments. So there is this institutional effort, but we know that the real um, actions uh, in our in our countries and in our region go, doesn't go so hand in hand with these uh, goals and targets. Poverty in Latin America and the Caribbean, despite the important process progress observed through the last 15 years. The rate of poverty and extreme poverty in rural areas of Latin America and the Caribbean represents about 1.0 times and 2.6 times the rates from urban areas. And this is a, this is a ratio and a condition that goes uh, in, in the same proportion all around the world, meaning that rural areas have their disparities, their difficulties, their um, conflicts some, at least twice as much as the urban ones and usually a many times three or more times uh, problems are then uh, more serious and the rurality the, the present rurality is also a, is somehow a synonym of these um, uh, unfair conditions Here we have a look at the same, how it works, the difference between rural and urban, and how the uh, agriculture suffers in a, in, a, in a higher proportion in the rural area. Also, the relationship between labor insertion of occupied rural population by sector and categories and sex in the way that you can see the, the extreme difference between a rural and urban in the different uh, labor areas and the insertion in the, and their insertion. Then how, of course, it represents then a, a lack of access to food. This is again the case of Latin America and the Caribbean. And then the chart is showing the, the dependence of the relationship between um, the the access to food according to the level of employment. We are facing this uh, pandemic period, but we can somehow also force is foreseeable the end of this period to be um, is um, expected by us. At some unexpected moment in different regions, countries, and communities with various rhythms and fashions in a process through time, finally, the pandemic will come to an end. The end of the present pandemic has become a scenario of permanent comment and constant reflection in the most diverse fields, as a result of which possible changes in paradigms and management models are announced and proposed. The reconsideration of human society as part of a species and regarded as just one more inhabitant of nature and not as, an, as its owner appears repeatedly in several of the new and reformulated approaches.
it can be also regarded upon as a return to the future, a future where humanity, nature, and society will have a new chance to try to do things differently. However, the return to a controlled or COVID-free world will not happen at once, a certain day, but through a considerable process of transitions with very different nuances by groups of countries and with marked impact of the reorganization of the hegemonic groups leading production and international trade. For the purposes of this presentation, I will focus on the priority issues in which we, at IFLA World Working Group on Agricultural Landscape, are preparing for this transition. First of all, and before entering into the agricultural aspects, I would like to speak a little bit about landscape itself in the sense that um, for, the, for the last 20 or 30 years, the ecological restoration and groups of ecologists and environmentalists have to taken the lead in, in, in regard to the, to the um, warming issues and to the climate change um, say um, ways of um, try to get adapted or resilient to it, and in this in this regard, in many institutions and organizations, landscape has suffered in a way that we made a long way up to during the during the last century, trying to to position landscape as a, an activity, as a profession, who, which has a holistic approach and, inter, and interdisciplinary view. And there, there was the risk or, uh, during the last decades that uh, landscape for some, not for us, landscape architects, but within the planning teams or even the political authorities, it, it was uh, somehow disregarded one of our main and most important issues, which is the fact that we don't only see the geographic issues, the geological issues, the geographic or economic, but we look at things in a holistic way. And within this holistic way, perception, meaning, understanding, significance are crucial factors and they do have to deal with uh, the population living in our countries and above all and certainly in our rural areas and uh, and then landscape is uh, landscape architects we are called to to gain um, say position within this group to recover and to continue to make emphasis in, in this, our vision, in which the physical, the geographical, the, the built environment, and the, and the economic issues are uh, very important to us. But we are the professionals that we, our call is to look at how all this is perceived, how, how we feel in regard to landscape, and how landscape reflects culture an identity. So um, I wanted to make this uh, parenthesis because even if we are talking in our if la world level working group on architecture on agricultural landscape about crucial issues as the one I am going to talk about now, we never um, for a minute uh, stopped understanding and bearing in mind. The, relate, the important relationship of landscape architecture with culture, with perception, with feelings, with society, with meaning, 
and with history and with identity. And so that's the agriculture as well. I mean, said so this, I will continue to state the um, certain crucial issues we are discussing for in order to face the transition. And these are, first of all, a change vision on the rural. Just I was talking about how the rural areas are some, somehow stigmatized as places where all the problems you may have are more serious, more deeper, uh, uh, deeper are deep in a more um, a crucial way than in the urban or in the intermediate areas. And this has got to change. So we are going to talk a lot about how coming out, even now, going through the pandemia uh, or the pandemic situation, we are going, we are, we have already started to try to envisage rural as a different issue. Rural as the change, rural as the space and the place for opportunities rather than the place where everything was abandoned and falling down. So change of vision on the rural is one of our key issues as members of our society and also as landscape artists and life. Emphasis on productive landscapes and alternative forms of agriculture Continuity, continuity of initiatives in progress at the outbreak of the pandemic emphasis on regeneration and ecological restoration, commitment to indigenous technical techniques, identity and ancestral values, opportunity for the bioeconomic and circular economy, and new consumer distribution models. It means that we, we are somehow outlining what the new vision for the rural is through all these three uh, key aspects. A change of vision of the, on the rural. From a geographical perspective, the rural is no longer considered as a space of deficiencies and poverty. It is understood as a space of opportunities to transform food and energy system and promote ecosystem services for the conservation of biodiversity, the fight against climate change, and sustainable management of natural resources like land and water. The rural areas are becoming, and even the rural, say, sectors of the urban areas, for the new rural coming into the cities is a place of opportunity. But for us, I mean, Latin America, Middle East, Africa, countries where we don't have these problems of lack of space for agriculture, uh, and most of our population lives uh, in, most of our population, which needs our help and support, lives in rural areas. So this uh, motto about um, promoting this new vision and this uh, and make our strategic plans and our designs trying to build up this new vision on the rural, which is the rural as the place of opportunities and the place to recover the relationship between society and nature. We are moving forward. We face a complex world scenario with less economic growth, greater volatility, trade restrictions, and with the need to act against climate change. Due to this situation, according to the, econo the United Nations Economic um, Municipal, an additional fund of about US dollar six billion would have to be allocated throughout the regions to full social protection needs. Also, another 2,000 millions ought to be allocated in order to support proper productive initiatives. Setting up a strategy for food security. 
if a working group on agricultural landscape poses to the best Develop a strategy disponibility, access. For food disponibility, we refer to food supply, which depends on national and local agricultural production or inputs. Regarding access, we are making reference to the availability of resources within which households count. For example, financial, physical, to purchase, a quantity of appropriate food or to produce and uh, serve themselves to this appropriate quantity of food. Use refers to the quality of food required to get the proper nutrition, status, or the healthy way of living. <coughs> Diversity, important component of food, food use associated with healthier diets and nutritional improvements. Regarding stability, we refer to the, to the capacity to have constant access to adequate quantities of quality of food. And then we were making reference in regard to all this about how production was considered up to now, how the growth of the commercial industrial agriculture enterprise has as a, in, as a, as a target, as, as a main objective, the uh, say infinite to the the non-stop grow growing to to increase their production and their utilities we are looking at things in a different way we we are already um, dealing with a situation in which production that is not any longer the main issue the main target for production but as we were saying is food security that we can all have we need for a healthy life. And in this regard, not only production is changing, but also the distribution system the, the, that makes food so dearer, makes the prices uh, to get up and up and being higher and higher all the time. So this uh, new situation, this new rurality, this new presence of the ruler within the urban, this new um, uh, closeness uh, between agriculture and nature is may, uh, allowing us to move forward to models of production that were already there, but that were not used, and at the moment are being used because of the situation of the pandemic. But also, they are paving our way to a different um, concept of what production, what what produ what means production in terms of target for agriculture, and also distribution. In this way, we see that the in many cases already models in which the food is directly consumed where where it is produced, and this would if this continues, this trend continues will generate uh, amazing changes and important changes within the special, special distribution of agriculture and economic activities and our relationship with food. How to maintain a sustainable supply for food security? Promoting sustainable agriculture, decreasing food losses, reducing the gender gap, promoting measures of adaptation to climate change and management of natural disasters, improving access to public and green infrastructure. Paul estimates that around a third of the fruit produced in the world, meaning 1.3 billion tons per year, is lost before consumption. 1.3 billion tons per year lost before consumption. These losses occur due to handling, distribution, storage, and consumer behavior problems. We have to stop that. And definitely we are changing that already. How to improve nutritional results? Designing and implementing agricultural solutions, nutrition sensitive, empowering the women 
and strengthening their social and economic status. Implementing condition transfers with appropriate targeting and monitoring, promoting the nutritional equipment of children and adolescents, improving water and sanitation services, as well as implementing food safety interventions. Food security, understood as a way of life and in relation to nature, together with the environment close to new concepts of rurality and urbanity, opens up a number of options for the improvement of ecosystem services, environmental health, quality of life, identity, and communication. It proposes a new relationship for consumer, distribution, and community production, production associated with a great and better employed public space. Culture and the public is in itself a challenge and at the same time, a great spectrum of possibilities. Thank you very much for your great presentation. Muchas gracias. Thanks so much. <laughs> now we have time for some questions and answers. Uh, I can see uh, a lot of people from the audience have raised very important issues in the chat box. And uh, I can see many, many of our colleagues from different universities uh, in different places around Iran that, who have joined this conversation. It's great. I wish to acknowledge their presence and at the same time uh, uh, ask them if they have any questions or if they have any comments, they just add to our discussion. Hello. Uh, Dr. Bethahani, salam. Befermay, microphone to faal. Hello. Carlos, bonsoir. Je suis Giti. Je suis ravi de te voir comme ça ici, Carlos. Merci, moi aussi, hein? mon J'ai gardé de beaux souvenirs de notre réunion à Costa Rica. C'était très bien te, euh, ton intervention maintenant. Vraiment, pour nous, c'est très bien comme ça. Euh, moi, vraiment, je ne te vois plus dans notre réunion. J'espère que... On se rencontrera une autre fois en Iran. Merci. Au revoir. À très bientôt. 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 کمیته ما هست کمیته بین المللی یونسکو هست منظر فرهنگی من کاساریکا وقتی که جلسه کمیتمون بود رفتم اونجا کالاس خیلی محبت کرد من یه سخنرانی تو دانشکده معماری کاساریکا داشتم و توی جلسه داشتم و کالاس هم محبت کرد خونه‌اش هم ما رو دعوت کرد و واقعا توی جلسات ISSL ایشون را هم میشه میبینم و یه مدتی واقعا جلسات نه من رفتم نه ایشون به همین جد بعد از سالها دیدمش خواستم سلام بکنم بهش مرسی بچه ها. مرسی خیلی ممنون خانم دکتر حضور شما واقعا باعث افتخار ماست خیلی لطف کردین که تشریف آوردین من اساتید دیگه هم دیدم آقای دکتر مچکر آقای دکتر سوزنچی هم دیدم خیلی ممنون که تشریف آوردین آقای دکتر خلیل نژاد آقای دکتر هیدری آقای دکتر سلطانی فر مرسی از دانشگاه خیلی زیادی اینجا تشریف دارن من خیلی خوشحالم حالا هم میتونن اگر سوالی یا کامنتی دارن دوستان تایپ بکنن یا اینکه میکروفونشون رو فعال بکنیم صحبت بکنن if you have any questions we can just activate your microphone you can uh, ask your questions uh, verbally or uh, we just type your questions and we ask your questions from Carlos. Or Armin, if there is anything else that you want to add or any questions that you have, it would be great. It's a good time to ask. Okay. 
First of all, thank you so much, Carlos. It was amazing. Uh, I have a question. Uh, in our working group, our agricultural landscape working group, you have uh, beautifully defined uh, some lines between agriculture and uh, landscape architecture, some field of work. Uh, could you please uh, uh, let me know something uh, a little bit about these lines of connection? For example, urban agriculture, agricultural heritage, very brief, of course. Uh, we we are we are we are dealing with that at the moment. We are discussing this. But I made a proposal that we are going to. There are, well, you, as you know, there are there are five different uh, leaders of the five different if, uh, world level regions, and uh, Armin is the, the the representative for the Middle East, and we, there is somebody from Asia, Africa. And Europe and the Americas as well. So we we need we we work with a certain openness and freedom for each uh, leader in his or her region. And we want to have certain points in common, points uh, that we share as this is as a sort of uh, as if it was a framework. Uh, Say an overall uh, uh, philosophy that all the different actions that are going to be uh, implemented in different action plans in each region do fall between uh, among three axes. And then these axes are the one that I, I believe I mean, want me to tell you what they are. And then I see there is what we should call a very, very well known and very well uh, considered axis. It has to do with ancestral culture, with ancestral techniques, with uh, plants that were used and are, are not used any longer, that might be reused, and also with the uh, traditional features of agriculture as a cultural. It's part of the cultural identity, so it's got to do this axis that I would say is one of the three axes. It's got to do got to do more with the cultural side of agriculture in relation to landscape. The rural atlas of the world is being developed for many years now, about ten years or more. And then different countries are doing their rural atlas, but at the moment. So different because what is rural is not rural anymore. We are trying to redefine the rural, and then urban areas are trying to recover rurality. So these maps are not so so clear. But then again, there is this axis that is going to do with this perception, with cultural issues, with the traditional and the changing position that that will uh, could be understood also as a map. And, it, it, and the outcome would be uh, an atlas, regional or world, world atlas, as I will say, where agricultural where agriculture takes place, where traditional and cultural indigenous architect agriculture still goes on, and where other forms of agriculture are starting. And this should be mapped as well, and this is part of cultural. Thinking. So this is one axis. Is another axis it would be like the, so to speak, the persistence of the existing model up to the up to 2020, which is the industrial, the commercial, world-level agriculture, the uh, very very well defined in terms of. Uh, uh, Territory organization, and then this is the landscape the, as it was carried out, as it is the agriculture as it was carried out in Europe and in all our countries up to now. And then it's regarded as a feature for tourism, as a as a as a scenic value, as a part of the land use, and uh, as a part of traditional tourism. 
So these are the two axes. And then in the center, there is the new, all, all what we are trying to do is the new thing, which is the innovation. The innovation, we are talking not about agriculture, but we are talking about eco, historic or eco agriculture, eco uh, tourist agriculture. I mean, it's an agriculture that is not only agriculture, but it has to do with environment, with ecology, with tourism, which is not intrusive, but it is a tourism that also goes for the for this ecological and environmental value. This is one side of this middle axis, the axis, the central axis. But the, probably the most important thing is all what I've been talking to you during my presentation, that is how rural areas are going to recover or, or even individual and families are going to be in a closer and different way of producing food. And then worldwide, humanity, I think, is trying to find out this new way of, of producing food. Because even if all this didn't happen and all these changes were not accepted, we wouldn't know how we would, would be able to, free, to feed the population in 2015. In 2050, I'm sorry. And I think there are a lot of other opportunities rather than going to Mars or Jupiter. I mean, I think we have these opportunities here in the Earth. And, and this is through innovation and through alternative ways of agriculture. So, dear Armin, these are my three axes. The axis about innovation and an agriculture that is also cultural, but is also alternative and is also ecological and environmental. And it, it's not looking at... Uh, um, a commercial or industrial results that is looking at health, healthy people, healthy community. Then on the other side, we have the cultural tradition that all has to be taken care of. And on the other side, we have the, through the transition, the remnants of what was going on, and of course, it will be taken care of. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Martin, please. And it's great to see that so much synergy is going around in the chat box. Many people are just talking to each other and uh, having some ideas about what's next and what they should do and to what extent it is applicable and it can be ex uh, executed in countries uh, with different, you know, at different uh, development stages. That's uh, that's great. Uh, if there are any other questions, uh, it would be great to ask uh, Carlos now. Otherwise. Uh, we just move to the next uh, part of our um, program. Is there anyone who wants to ask the question uh, in person? If just raise your hand and I will activate your microphone. Otherwise, I just uh, I just thank Carlos for the wonderful presentation. It was great. Uh, and I think we already met in New Zealand in one of the IFLA conferences there. It was during my student time. I, I represented Iran in one of, the, uh, one of the IFLA conferences. And it is great to see you this time, of course, remotely. I'm very much looking forward to seeing you again in one of the International Federation of Landscape Architects events. Who knows? Somewhere, somewhere in the world. Perhaps, perhaps in Iran, as Giti was saying. Yes, why not? <laughs> Thank you very much. If there are any final words, I will be happy to hear your final final words. I'm sorry. Uh, is there anything that you want to add to finish to your uh, talk? Well, I think the I think my the most important message probably deals with what we as landscape architects do uh, so much we can contribute to by this, by this um, interdisciplinary vision, by this vision that encompasses uh, to the geophysic and the, uh, uh, the engineering uh, um, point of view, or even architectural in a traditional sense. 
and it has to do with perception, with identity, and with meaning. Uh, we, 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 we can make a lot of difference in the urban uh, public space, in the interfaces between rural and urban, and above all, in the preservation of uh, wild areas as well, to, through our vision as landscape architects. Dr. Carlos Jankiewicz, thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. Bye for now. Bye.